Good day, folks. I'd like to talk to you about a new and improved self-recovering Bedini circuit here, taking into consideration my new Maxwell interactions. It's one thing to have all the interactions, folks, but to start making practical applications takes a while. So I've been working on that, and thanks to that, I've been able to revise my um, self-recovering Bedini circuit that a lot, of, a lot of people have been talking about lately. But first, I just wanted to show you, if you're wondering why the lights are dim, this is an LED over there, you can see. And it's my power cell, which I made somewhere around, I think, March. And it's the Zamboni power one with the ice tray. And it still runs the LED here. There it is, pretty brightly too. So I'm just going to turn the light back on here. I just wanted to show you folks that because some people were asking for an update and they wanted to see, you know, the new cell over here. Well, not the new cell, but, you know, the old one I had, which is still working pretty good here. So anyways, um, basically what I want to focus on today here is my um, self-recovering Bedini circuit here that I've been showing a bit here and talking about. So basically this was the first revision and I came up with something better. I've been thinking all night and trying to figure out with the new interaction something I can do to make it better. And it's actually like past 3 o'clock in the morning here. And I'm still not sleeping because it's all fresh in my mind and I don't want it to go away. So I decided I better make a video now. So I'm sorry if I look a little rough around the edges. It's like in the middle of the night, literally here. So with that said, folks, I'd like to get into it. And I'm going to show you a um, circuit. There's the uh, link. I'd like you to uh, see it there because I don't have a printout right now. And I will actually, um, so you will see it right about now. And this is the new revision, okay? So what's very interesting, I recommend you download the PDF for the actual description of what's going on. There's several interactions. So basically, as I was saying with the new Maxwell equations and solutions, it does recommend a zero-point interaction, but very much like Tom Bearden was saying, they're very transient, very sharp, brief moments that are very, very, um, like Tom Bearden talked about it, but without the, the mathematical framework, the new interactions revealed that I was able to come up with. So anyways, with that said, it did support uh, the having very sharp spikes but the problem with that as a lot of us um, understand is even with MOSFETs and switches in the NS range it gets very very difficult that we need so I started thinking about it and I figured with a few modification folks we can use nature and magnetic magnetics actually to take care of generating that spike for us at that NS range without having to worry of the switching to do it so we use basically inherent properties properties of so if you see my new circuit here it's a little more complicated but what it is essentially is another set of MOSFETs that switch at 50 50 so what happened is you you have two coils well sorry not two coils two MOSFETs switching into one coil so you're keeping the magnetization energized in the coil all the time so you always have that magnetic field there instead of having it only partially. So what happens is it's like a reservoir of that energy. So during the next cycle, you don't have all that recovery to do all the time. And yet, because it's still 50-50 square wave, and you know, we can say that one is on, one is off, but there's always going to be that in, that inherent property of the dual switching. That's what we're taking advantage of, folks, to get that NS spike out of the deal for free without having to worry about it. So this is how we can interact with the zero point very efficiently and still offer the same recovery that I had in the original circuit, as you can see. But with some modifications, we can then send it to, I call it a tank, which is the super capacitor bank for recharging. So then it's it, by keeping the field open, it allows us to, you know, zero or next to zero CEMF interaction. So again, this can be a very efficient motor driver. So imagine a motor where you're essentially a traditional motor that can be driven in this fashion where essentially you've got near 100% of the energy in the output instead of wasting half of it in the CEMF. 
plus the so plus the interactions of the environment, the earth fields, and the magnetic potential setting up against the environment, and the zero point interactions, the inductive. You know, there's several interactions. So what I'm getting at is potentially one can build a motor once it's started up with a potential little source of energy precharged from a supercapacitor or something. It could potentially keep itself going from just sucking whatever it needs out of the environment from its various interactions. So a much more efficient way of doing it. Now the 50-50%, that's why there's changes like we have to go very high frequency so that at 50-50, it's still at high frequency. That's essentially a spike, but you're, you're, you're making it efficient because if we were to go like 99% on a single power supply, it would essentially be almost like creating a dead short. So it wouldn't be efficient, it would be very hot, and you lose most of your effect. So that's why, if you're wondering, this is why we use the dual setup. So um, at high frequency, very well within range of MOSFETs, at like 40K uh, or something, you can even go a little bit higher if you want to. So we still end up with the same things. It's just we have um, the continuous magnetic field reservoir, so we don't have to waste all that energy at every event to 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 re to uh, reestablish that full field because we're essentially, uh, you know, we in in just saying, you know, 50-50 means what, at half the time, but there's still going to be that transient time, and that's just exactly what we're looking for. So uh, reduce CMF, and you've got that extreme um, interaction with the potential zero point and other fields nearby. So this is perfectly in the direction that we're looking for, and I hope you uh, take these modifications into consideration. And again, read the PDF, because what happens, folks, is I didn't have enough space in YouTube, so I'm going to leave a link to the PDF that describes all the systems in detail. So with that said, I'm going to let you go, and thank you very much again for watching.